Yo, how's it going, guys? It's Gimswag here, and welcome to today's video. So, there's no, I'm not going to be reacting to any of like diss tracks and controversy about KSI and Deji. I will make a video about it, what I think at this point. Um, but yeah, uh, today we are going to be reacting to video from Oversimplified. This guy is amazing of like saying what happened back in the days and like the history like with world war one world war two this is the world war one uh oversimplified version so it's not like the it's not everything that happened in the war it's like the important things that were in the war and just simplified not not like that you took like a fucking huge five ton book and just put it on the table and just said everything that happened there but yeah, this is just a simplified version of this video. And actually, hold up, I'm just gonna close this door really quick. So yeah, let's just hop right into it. This is World War One Oversimplified Part One. There are two parts, and then after that, I'm just gonna react to World War Two Oversimplified, which I have watched before. But I thought, why not just to react to it and just show you guys what happened back then? So yeah, let's you can just get started. The world of 1914, a time of modern technology, culture, and fashion. Truly the height of civilization. Let's have a war. Everyone knew a big war was coming. France wanted some stuff back that Germany had taken from it. Germany wanted to take more of everyone's stuff. And they were building a big sexy navy that was making the British uncomfortable. Well, I uh, saw that Poland was not alive. But yeah, they come back at some point. And I'm also going to watch just like... A video that I saw once before, I don't know, I think my teacher showed it, which I would have to find, but it's just basically how world changed from once to now, how, like, map changes. So I'm just gonna react to it as well at some point. These two empires thought they were really cool, but lots of different people who lived there didn't think it was so cool. Yeah. And some of them had even been declaring independence with help from Russia. Everyone was talking about each other behind each other's backs. Yeah. Throwing the fact that military. Russia has always been the the fucking destroyer of everybody. That has always been a thing, and probably will, especially with like Ukraine and Russia having conflicts at this point. I'm not going to just jump right into it. You can find what happened. I'm just gonna put this like that. Russian and Ukraine ship saw each other, the Ukrainian ship just ran into the fucking Russian or the other way around and just sunk the other ship. And yeah, that goes that. Poland might take a part in this. And if that happened, I'm just gonna, in some video, I'm just gonna say that who will win this war, so, yeah. Just to guys point out. technology had come a long way since the last major war, and suddenly everyone was pretty eager to beat each other up. In this area of Austria-Hungary lived some Serbs and Bosnians who hated living in Austria-Hungary. So the Austro-Hungarian Archduke Franz Ferdinand goes there for a nice drive in an open-top car with his car's route published in advance. And that went just about as well as you'd expect. Some assassin- What do you think about it? How many cars- like how cars looked back then and now? We have come a long way since then. <laughs> were waiting for him along the way and threw bombs at his car, but they missed and blew up some officers behind him instead. So the Archduke goes into hiding, leaves Sarajevo, and the whole war never happens. Except no, the Archduke doesn't leave, but instead goes back out in the open top car to visit the injured officers in hospital. The driver takes a wrong turn and by sheer coincidence gets stuck beside one of the failed assassins, who shoots him. Austria-Hungary is understandably pissed about all this, and they think the Serbian government had something to do with it, which they might have. So they go to their ally Germany and say, Hey Germany, we're gonna declare war on Serbia, and Germany is all for that. So Austria-Hungary send a big list of impossible demands to Serbia, and when Serbia refuses, they declare war. Austria-Hungary yeah. and Germany are friends, and Serbia is protected by Russia who's friends with France, so they all declare war on each other. Montenegro joins in too. France and Britain also have a kind of alliance. So when France says, hey Britain, you got my back? Britain is like, maybe. And then they decide to stay out of it, which is great for Germany because Germany has a plan. They know that Russia is so big and clumsy that it will take them a while to get ready for war. So with this guy in charge, 
Germany will send all its troops into France at lightning speed while Russia is getting ready. Yeah. Defeat France, then move all the troops to Russia and defeat Russia, and then we all speak German and eat Pfeffer Potast every day. Just one problem. France has loads of forts and defenses along its German border, and Germany can't waste any time fighting them, so Germany decides to go around them. Through Belgium. Belgium is neutral, but Germany wants to march 750,000 troops through it to get around France's defenses. They're hoping Belgium mm. will just kind of sit down and shut up, but they don't. They fight back, and they're pretty good too, so of they course. slow the Germans down. What's worse is that Britain shows up, and they're pretty pissed that Germany's invading neutral countries. So now Britain declares war in Germany. Yeah. So Germany push on Basically, through Belgium and commit happened? some atrocities along the way. They also wear spikes and sometimes skulls on their uniform. So if you're trying to not look like the bad guys, good job. The Allies have a propaganda extravaganza, and this starts having an influence around the world, notably in America. The US President Woodrow Wilson sees himself as a bit of a Jesus figure, and spends most of the war trying to get everyone to just hug it out. But there's also... Yeah, like, America has been always in, like, the... in every single war, which, yeah, and they have always been on the winning side. That's, like, a big thing. Uh, for America, they never just like both wars. They never. <coughs> Sorry, guys, I'm a bit sick. But they never joined in. Like they just never just like yeah. They they just didn't. They just were helping the uh, allies like UK, France. They were just helping them. They never like officially joined in to like they actually needed to when the allies were losing. Then the America just like hopped in to just do it. Large population of ethnic Germans living in the United States, and when yeah. the war first broke out, they were like, yay Germany. But now that they're committing atrocities in Belgium, they're less enthusiastic. Let's yeah. play Spot the French Soldier. Spot the French Soldier. Did you see him? <laughs> Easy, right? He's wearing a bright blue uniform with red trousers. And do you know who else spotted him easily too? The Germans. Yep. So when the French were slowly marching in columns through the countryside, the Germans easily tore them to shreds with their giant guns. All the nations involved in this war went in with an old school war mentality, and all of them had to update their uniforms. Yeah, now as you guys can see, these are most of the uniforms. They are like green. When there is winter, they are all obviously white. And yeah, I'm just gonna go back to like in World War One. I'm just gonna say why in winter the uniforms are white when the when I have to. So yeah, just be prepared for that video as well. Tactics a lot during the Great War. Because this war was gonna be like nothing anyone had ever seen before. Russia's ready for war, and way earlier than expected. Go. Cool. Hey Austria-Hungary, can you get on top of that? <laughs> oh yeah, sure, we've got this, nope. So Germany <laughs> has to send some troops back to the east to defend nope. against the Russians. The chief of staff nope. of the Austro-Hungarian army is this guy, and although he is handsome, nope. he turns out not to be the best military strategist. <laughs> Austria-Hungary constantly ignores Germany's advice, and then comes running back to Germany whenever they get in trouble. Austria-Hungary even gets its ass kicked by tiny Serbia, who repels all their invasion Jesus attempts at Christ. the start of the war. It's better news for Germany in the north though, where they almost completely wipe out the Russian second army. Back on the western front, the Germans continue advancing and are in sight of Paris. At this point, Outside anyone would be Paris, forgiven yeah. for thinking the Germans were going to get that quick victory after all. But then things start to go wrong. The French commander-in-chief knew something had to be done, and yeah. he ordered his armies to stop retreating. In the resulting battle, a gap opened up in the German lines. If a gap opens up, the enemy can use it to flank you from the side and behind, so the German armies have to retreat. The Allies launch a counterattack, mm. so the Germans dig into defensive positions. The Allies do the same. Then both sides move north, trying to outflank each other along the way. When yeah, yeah, basically that was what happened, and that continued for a while. And in so many movie documentaries, like when I don't remember if this was in World War One or two, but when Christmas time came, they just there was like a big gap between them and stuff like that. They just hopped out the cover and just start playing soccer, like as friends. They were just playing together. Then, and later that day, they might kill each other after that. They might kill the person they were playing soccer with. Yeah, but that was the, probably the best part of the war, that they just just stopped and just stopped, stopped playing. Soccer. Stop, 
Like the world didn't matter to them. They just want to have a little bit of fun. That's at least in my opinion that that was nice. When they reach the sea, they're in a stalemate with trench systems running the whole way from the coast to And yeah guys, I, I personally don't know much about, about World War One, Because you guys don't know, I live in Iceland. So you guys might not know that. But I'm originally from Poland, which took a huge part in both wars and got destroyed especially in world war ii that was the yeah yeah but yeah uh on the other hand uh because i live in iceland iceland never took a part in any wars they have iceland has never been into a war and like never wanted to take part in any wars I, I believe in the World War II, Germany, if I remember correctly from school, Germany wanted to take over Iceland to be able to have a base there to be able to attack Amer to attack the US. But US were, were first and had military bases in Iceland, which now on, if any country wants to attack Iceland, mate, good luck. Because you're gonna be fucked. Like, we have. Like, I'm uh, Fuck, Iceland doesn't have a military. But, oh boy, you are fucked if you wanna attack Iceland. Like, we have Amer We have the US protecting us. We have England protecting us. We have Denmark protecting us. We have Norway protecting us. Like, bruv, don't try. <laughs> but yeah, let's just continue. The beginning of trench warfare on the Western Front. Here's how trench warfare works. Two opposing lines of trenches with no man's land in between. Yeah. One side would pummel the other with hundreds of thousands of artillery shells, sometimes for days at a time. This had a huge psychological effect on the soldiers, leaving many shell-shocked. Then, the attacking troops would leave their trenches and rush across no man's land, a muddy wet mass of shell craters and barbed wire. Yeah. The defending trench would unleash machine gun fire on the attackers, inflicting thousands of casualties. The attackers would send wave after wave until either they gave up or the opposing trench was finally overrun. There would be months of fighting and the deaths of thousands in order to gain a few meters or kilometers of land. Living in the trenches was hard work too. Corpses, mud that could swallow you whole, pools of poisonous water, rats, disease, the smell. It's insane that millions of soldiers put up with these conditions and commanders ordered them to do so for years. Yeah, jeez. So yeah, that's that's that. That's the first world war, and yeah, that's that was a big thing, like a really big thing, guys. Uh, but yeah, we gonna I gonna can see you guys in part two tomorrow. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button down below. Also, if you're brand new to my YouTube channel, please subscribe. We are four subs away from 200 subscribers. We are trying to hit that subscribe goal before end of this year. Also. Hit that little notification button so get notified when I next upload, especially hit it today because I'm going to be uploading tomorrow. I want to be notified when that happens. Hope you enjoyed. Get a good time. Peace.